Um, I just want to give an update on, um, and I may need help from the committee, um, on our strikes appeal. We were appealing to the city um, to, um, because of the way planning had interpreted our NCD. I don't know if you all understand what an NCD is. Um, an NCD is a community plan. So this is a plan Jerry Lockie was the, because he complained the most about it, we put him in charge. And we had meetings all over the neighborhood. We were concerned because houses were being torn down and um, suburban type houses were being built, the kind with the, with the garages in the front and the recessed doors um, and the backyards. So um, we decided, the city asked if we wanted to do an NCD. We weren't, nobody wanted to go historic at that time. And, um, and so we had meetings in churches, in schools. We took it further than that, as we usually do. So even with the city not around, we held it in people's living rooms. So that people had input about, and people we've never seen before or seen since, wanted to have input about what was important in our, in our neighborhood. And it wasn't just based on looks. So porches, for example. Like people wanted um, houses to have porches because it creates a safer neighborhood for kids. Right? It promotes people talking to each other. So we went through this year process, and then it was we had a, a, some guidelines that now are, are the official guidelines. They're standards. Standards, I'm sorry. And the city then said, you know, yes, these are your new standards. That's the reason we fight so hard for NCD standards. Some people say, well, what do you care about the window, or what do you care? It's because the process comes from community. This is the only thing that we have that this was bottom up. And so that's why we fight to protect the NCD. And that doesn't mean there aren't always exceptions. There are. But, but, that, but that issue, and, it's, and there's a lot of things coming up in the future that we can talk about later that are starting to challenge that neighbors should have, hoods should have a say in what their neighborhoods look like or what are the design standards. So we, were, we um, appealed um, a decision handed down from the city on, on strikes, and we got threatened with a lawsuit. And the lawsuit said you should drop the appeal or you will be sued. We were totally unprepared. We're not prepared as a neighborhood or as um, individuals on the board to do that. I am hoping that we use that, that anger you know, and being upset that we were kept from a democratic process, we were bullied out of it, to, to try and get the city and the new comp plans to, to provide legal representation for cities who are doing nothing more than defending the very standards the city passed. Yes, ma'am. On what grounds would they sue? It wasn't so much the grounds. It was that you can keep people tied up in litigation for years. And I don't, you know, I mean, we don't as a neighborhood have that kind of money that we can hire an attorney and fight that kind of battle. It's not even so much about what, what, what they would be citing. It's just a harassment suit. And, and part of me is like, you know, I was very angry, very upset. When the board met, that was probably the hardest decision we ever made, to walk away from something we felt we had a right as American citizens to do. But I think we can turn that into something more positive for the future with the help of our elected officials and the help of all of you to help pressure them to maybe do some things that protect neighborhoods in the future. Yeah, I'm sorry. Now, who threatened the neighborhood? I don't really want to say. It was it was the strikes developer. I, I don't because I. What did you say the where the development is? It's on. It was on the corner of Woodlawn and uh, Blanco Road. Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg, and um, I feel like a hobbit and the eye of Mordor is going to get me. <laughs> The, the, the Woodlawn and Fred Road. That was it. Yes, ma'am. So uh, I guess I don't understand because I haven't been to the in so long. Um, the association did, did not want it there? No, no, it wasn't about the, the strikes as a right to be there. They're a business, and even if some of us felt like, oh, well, there could be something different there, more imaginative, they have the zoning to be there. The canopy in the front, the city had determined that the canopy is usually the thing that hangs over a building and creates a setback. We want buildings that come up to the sidewalk because it creates a more walkable neighborhood, it creates a more walkable corridor. And, and we wanted, you know, maybe they could put the gas station pumps in the back, which they have done before. And the developer, um, the city then said, no, that canopy that goes over the gas pumps, that is going to count as the front of the building. 
And, and the language is a little ambiguous, but the intent is written down, that, that what, they, what they meant. And so that's why we were appealing it, because we felt like, you know, maybe the Board of Adjustments might see it in a different way. And so, Cynthia, I just want to add a little bit of clarity. So our appeal was on a decision that city staff made, an, an interpretation. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> an interpretation that city planners made as far as what constituted a building for the setback. But because that appeal then resulted in the developer being notified, I assume, that this appeal had been filed and therefore they would need to stop their construction until the issue were resolved, that that prompted him to want to take action. We had a homeowner that had signed on the appeal with us as someone who lives close to the project and felt passionately about the design, about having the building at the front. Um, he actually received a phone call directly from the developer letting him know that he would sue him for interference with his project. And we later, within an hour or so, the board received an email from the council office that the, uh, they had received a phone call from the developer uh, letting them know that he would sue the city, the neighborhood association board members, and so forth. And so we talked to a number of attorneys. Everybody was everybody was calling their you know their mother-in-law's brother, who's an attorney, and uh, Brock was able to get in front of a city attorney. And they all said the suit would not have merit, but that doesn't mean it can't sue you. Now it may get thrown out at some point. You may have counteraction, but. You know, there's no fund for that. We, we had to fundraise the $600 for the fee for the appeal. And persons who volunteer, Cassie and Sophia <coughs> and, and Matt Purdy and, and Madeline, they're not looking to get sued personally. That, that's, you know, that's an unrealistic expectation, I think. And they're very clever and they put a time frame on it and they, you know, the homeowner, he, you know, he said, I can't, I can't do this. And so we, the board voted that, you know, we would withdraw the appeal. So um, I hope that added some clarity. So, so we asked for two things. We asked for $600 to be returned so we could give the money back to people who had donated. And we asked for assurances that the developer wouldn't sue us anyway. We never got the second. In fact, what we've gotten is to a third party that if we don't sign a paper saying we will not cause any more trouble or, you know, we will not do any more, because there's some things coming up that are not NCD, like the signage, that we will, that we will be sued anyway. We're, we're... Sure, this is written in... I'm sorry to jump in. No, no. This is written not only by us, but by the city, which has an NCD. We have five public meetings, and it was run by the city for these things. The city should be standing up for us, not the developers, when it comes to those standards. So, you know, it's like they're based, the city has decided that they agree with the Citizens United Supreme Court decision. It seems like that these developers are a person. And, so, and you know, when there is always a chance we would have lost a Board of Adjustments, but that loss is like, okay, you go through the process. But to not be, to be prevented from going through the process is really, that's scary. I mean, when you think about it, it's like, you know, you're not even allowed to follow due process because someone's harassing you. So, so, you know, to go forward, you know, with the new comp plans, we need to have, we need to pressure our legislators and, and you know, our councilmen, quite frankly, um, to be, you know, to help us get language in there that protects neighborhoods. As, I mean, if we're harassing somebody, that's different. But when you're just going through what the city process is and you're prevented from doing that, we should be protected. These are the city plans. The city should be taking a lead in helping us protect them. Yes? So is this the right time to discuss the possibility of becoming historic again? Because I know the city has limited funds. I really feel a passion in this neighborhood. I'm on Facebook 
I see the zoning discussions, the NCD discussions, I see the struggles we have. The only real, the real nail in the coffin I see the city backing are the historic guidelines. And I know we've tried so hard and put so much effort into these NCD guidelines. Is it time to discuss the next step and really ensuring that all of these guidelines are going to be you know, enforced? Because the NCDs probably will continue to be enforced very laxly. The city just doesn't have a funding in the development office or anywhere else, code enforcement, to, unfortunately, to back it up. I've been told several times by, by other neighborhoods and by different city departments that if we want to be protected, we have to go historic. 2005, there was no appetite for that at all. I don't know, I don't know if that's changed. That's a discussion we may have to have as a community. You may need to have with your neighbors. <clears throat> And, and what does that mean, and are we willing to do that? I mean, that's something we all have to answer together. But that is, that would protect us, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm on the Zub so obviously I'm for enforcing the NCD. But there is a lot, or there are a lot of people in this neighborhood who think the NCD is too invasive on their privacy and their property, and that they should not have to deal with something like an NCD because it's their property and why should the city tell them what to do with their property? There's a lot, there are, and obviously I, that's not what I believe, but there are a lot of people in this community who really feel like that and think that they are being, that they, we are stampeding them with this, this desire to become NCD or historic and, and you know, and they feel that they are not a part of them. And they're the ones who don't come to these meetings. Yeah, but I mean, they don't have to for us to have to take our neighbors' feelings. And that's, that's exactly right. I mean, there are a lot of people who would not, or at least wouldn't before, go through with this check. Also, and on the uh, Zoning and Urban Design Committee, and the very fact that the, uh, the company's representatives told you that they, uh, they insist upon the Neighborhood Association uh, promising that we, the Neighborhood Association, would never cause any more problems for them. Well, for, for, uh, you know, somehow, why does this not sound like blackmail to me there, you know? And I want to know, now it's my understanding that uh, there are state laws that protect, that protect, uh, a nonprofit uh, organization like neighborhood associations, uh, their board members from being sued for just any frivolous excuse. Uh, do we have any attorney friends who can give us some answers on recourse for this very crazy situation? Well, we have not been contacted about that second part. The citizen who had his name on, he's been the one that's contacted. For some reason, they think he's president of the Beacon Hill Neighborhood Association, which I'm OK with. <laughs> <laughs> so we, they have not actually contacted us. I think our feelings for right now is we just leave it alone. I mean, it's, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to go look for trouble, but I'm also not going to sign off on our rights. I mean, I, I, I think I'd probably be willing to resign before I do that. I'm, I'm done running scared. But I'm also not a rich person, so we'll see what happens. Um, Madeline, did you have a question? Um, I'm on the board of the Beacon Hill Neighborhood Association, and just one thing about the historical districts is they're uh, just as upset as we are about our neighborhoods. It's not only, it's almost not an issue of what our guidelines are. It's uh, hardly any neighborhoods, in, in, especially in the inner city of San Antonio, are getting any support from their elected officials, their councilmen any of the uh, city uh, departments. It, they're Monta Vista, Dignity Hill, uh, all the historic King William. They are just as frustrated as we are because they are not getting any support from the city. So it's not our guidelines that are the problem. It's we, as citizens, aren't getting our, the support that we need. It is a hard time to be in a neighborhood, in a downtown neighborhood. The tension is really strong right now because people are moving downtown. And it's like, we don't exist somehow. And you know, it's important for us to have a voice in our neighborhood. John Merson, did you have a question? Hi, my name is John Merson. I'm one of the authors of the neighborhood plan. And um, that was a plan that predated the, uh, yeah, NCD. Oh, you talking about Mid the Midtown plan? Yes, the Midtown plan. We were 
playing with standards there. We had meeting after meeting, we had participation with about this group of this number of people. It went on for a year or more, monthly, weekly. Every meeting was attended also by a member from the city planning department to guide us. These standards were written essentially by the city planning department. They knew it. Did. Nextly, as far as a, his, as a historical designation, I think that would help us some. It takes 50, per, I think, 50% plus one. Yeah, I think we might want to table the discussion about whether we want to become historic, because that's a whole meeting all yeah, by itself. <laughs> it's a whole lot of meetings all by themselves. Yes, ma'am. Just out of curiosity, um, does Beacon Hill have a historic survey on our neighborhood by SACS or the Office of Historic <coughs> Preservation? We're in the process of creating one, but we don't have a, a complete one. Uh -huh. And if the neighborhood would like to participate in that, I'd be happy Can't to hear you. Claudia, would you mind standing up and introducing yourself? I'm Claudia Guerra. I'm a, I'm a Midtown resident. I live in Alta Vista. I was here as a show of support for the NCD standards, but since you're asking questions about historic preservation, I am the cultural historian in the Office of Historic Preservation. Um, I do not oversee designations, but I do oversee the department that does that. I do work on cultural initiatives. Um, so if you are interested in working, uh, doing a survey um, of your neighborhood, I would be, I would encourage that you take on that role uh, because this is your neighborhood. Uh, we're happy to work with the Conservation Society to come in and do that. Um, Jenny Hay is, with the, is a colleague in my office who oversees that and our deputy director, um, uh, Kathy Rodriguez, is also a contact for that and I would be happy to have him come and present to you. Um, our deputy, I shouldn't say have them, I report to the deputy director. Um, and, but we could all train you and we have a mobile app that does all of this, so it's easy for you to do. And sometimes it's not even becoming a historic district. It's not even getting landmarks. It's just identifying what's important to you in the neighborhood so that when something comes to our office, our office does oversee all demolitions, we can, we can find out what's important to you because it's already been surveyed. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that's good that's happened, I mean, someone was mentioning how the neighborhoods are all under the same kind of pressures, is we have formed what we're calling Tier 1, um, what is it again? Tier 1 Neighborhood Coalition. So it's all of the downtown, or most of the downtown neighborhoods are coming together and we're working, we're going to start working on issues that we have in common. So, you know, Monta Vista has certain things in common with us, even though they may be a very different kind of neighborhood. The same with King William, definitely Alta Vista, Monticello Park, Woodlawn. All of those um, groups are, are people who are talking and we are coming together. And I think if nothing else, that will also give us some power. So I'm very, I'm very happy to report that. Um, is there any other questions about, about this subject before we move on? Yes, yes, Mr. Uh, are we going to take any, are there any proposed actions on this other uh, than just letting it happen? You know, believe me, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a lot of actions I'd like to take. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, I think what, and I may be wrong about this and this is not a satisfying answer, but the way I see it, what we really want to happen now is how do we take this and make changes for the future so it doesn't happen to us again. I don't see anything that we're prepared to follow through on that we could do. Oh, Postmas, get in Except that you're not willing to sign that document stating no. that we wouldn't not pursue our rights in future to question um, a design standard. So in that regard, we are you are taking that action. There is no nothing on the table, the action we're going to take but I'm not willing to sign away a basic right that we have. And as far as the appeal, that's done, and there's no, there's yeah, nothing we've that already, done. We've already dropped the appeal. Okay. This is our councilman, Council Roberto Trevino. Um, he'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Cynthia. So, obviously we have a very contentious issue here, and I'm here tonight because I want to show you, number one, you have my support. There's a couple things we want to talk about, number one, the process that you just heard about, the appeals process. Absolutely, 100%, you have the right to file an appeal. Um, as far as whether you choose to drop the appeal or not, 
you know, that's something that we as an office can't advise you on, unfortunately. This is not something that we do. We can't provide legal services in that regard. And if there's any questions regarding that, I brought Jed Mabius to, to help answer some of that specifically. Any specific legal questions you have, this is, this is really important. We really are trying to, to figure out ways to support you to, to work through this issue. We have filed a CCR that allows the NCD to, to override a UDC amendment. Now, again, the issue is this threat of a lawsuit over the appeal. Uh, my, the only thing I can say is I, my hope is that you would seek the legal advice necessary to make that proper decision for you. But we can't do that. I wish we could, but we can't. Yes, sir. You know, why is that? This is, a, this is a city law that is inside the city department. So where is, where is the legal standing? I, I hear you. And again, as I said, I wish we could do that. But uh, I have uh, Jed Mabius here can maybe help to explain uh, some of that, the reasoning behind why we cannot step into that situation. And it, if, if you allow me a few minutes, here's Jed Mabius. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, I'd like to uh, say that I retired from practicing law in 2000. I became a volunteer for State Representative Mike Villarreal with our office right across the street when he was elected to his first term. I spent many hours in this cafeteria. Um, I then retired and again, and Mayor Hartberger, when he was elected, he asked me to come and work in his office as his liaison to the city council. I had done a lot of mediation work in my law practice. So I worked for four years with Mayor Hartberger uh, and the council members on issues. Uh, Mayor Castro asked me to stay on, and I did for five years, and then I retired again. And uh, uh, my wife says I'm a real failure at retirement. <laughs> but uh, Councilman Trevino is an old friend, and he asked me to help him, and I was glad to be able to do that, and I've been working with him since December of 2014. Um, to understand this, and it, it's it's got to be really frustrating to you, and uh, and I certainly do appreciate that. But a councilman is one person of eleven of an eleven member legislature, if you will. A, a city council is like a small legislature. A councilman on his own has no authority to do anything. He can't make decisions on behalf of the city. Um, he's also, he has no authority like a judge. He can't resolve conflict. What he can do is to encourage uh, talk between parties when there are disagreements. But just like Beacon Hill Neighborhood Association is an entity of its own, a nonprofit entity, the developer is also an entity. And as a council member, he has no authority over these entities. He can't resolve a dispute between them. He can encourage them to talk. And if both parties want to talk, he can help facilitate that. And uh, I'd like to give you an example of, of where that worked well. Uh, when I was working with Mike, we had a very contentious issue that came up regarding the new HEB on Woodlawn, or I mean on uh, Hildebrand and Fredericksburg, the Deco B. And HEB presented the design and it was uh, not at all what the neighborhood wanted. And the, the fuel station was back by Rosewood where the neighborhood houses were. Uh, they kept the large giant billboard which they had a right to. So uh, three neighborhood associations got together and asked if they would meet and talk, and HEB agreed to do that. And I agreed to be the mediator, and uh, we had quite a few meetings and worked for quite a while. And HEB was a willing partner, and they uh, agreed to 
move the fuel station from the back to the front so it's now on Hildebrand. They agreed to change the entire design of the store so that it has the deco design. They agreed to pull down the large billboard and just put a berm sign. Um, they donated $50,000 to the DECO organization. So that's the kind of thing that a council member can encourage, or a state representative can, when there's agreement to proceed. And uh, does, does that help in explaining the role? Well, I think the councilman is very lucky to have a friend like you to stand up for him. Unfortunately, we don't have anyone to stand up for us. Mary Ann. Developer, and I know Councilman Trevino was made aware of this when you were running. We were brought it to your attention. We reached out to this developer's developer several times, and he never once wanted to meet with us. A long, um, long time ago. And as a matter of fact, I mean, it isn't our first time that we've encountered his personality traits personally. Yes, sir. So I think this. This is uh, um, our state representative, Diego Bernal. And I, so real, real quick, I think that, that, that Jeb is right in, in explaining the, the powers and lack thereof of the council person. But I'm thinking about. Can you use the microphone, microphone please? Oh. All right. So I've been thinking about what Jeb has said. He's right that the powers of a council person are are limited. There's not a magic hammer that they wield. But I've also been listening to you guys and thinking about it. Cosima and I have talked about this uh, for a few days now. I think that there might be something that we can try to do that is creative, and I'll explain what it is. First of all, I think my fear and his fear and your fear is not just what happens in this neighborhood, but in the future, if any neighborhood follows the preset process and a developer, whoever it is, is allowed to sue and that lawsuit, or the threat of the lawsuit, is allowed to stand, then that can have a chilling effect on neighborhoods' abilities to sort of speak up for themselves. And not to typecast, but both of us represent areas that don't have the same, the same sort of, of involvement here, or even the capacity to withstand something like that. And so uh, the threat of a lawsuit may cause them to retreat very quickly, which I think sort of opens the door. He's right, right? I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm one of 150, you're one of 11. But I do think that there might be something with the city attorney's office, where we ask them either to jump in or to ask for a city attorney's opinion. In other words, if you've got a process laid out and the city lays it out and the neighborhood's following it as it's written, then there's no reason why the city itself would not defend its own policies, right? And so, uh, <laughs> But, but, but how do you do that when there's not a lawsuit? How do you do that? That's the problem, right? How do you do when there's not a lawsuit? Because you guys have to be sued first, accept service, file a response, and then maybe the city turns in. So what I'm suggesting might be a city attorney's opinion when the city attorney runs through the legal process and says, here's my official statement on this issue. That alone may have some effect on keeping other developers from trying to do the same thing. We're trying to create it. Okay, so I'd like to go back to the question that I asked that hasn't been answered. I asked, so who has legal standing? And it sounds like you're telling me the city attorney hasn't even looked at this yet. So I understand that the city council is just one person out of 11. I understand how that works. But we still haven't talked about who has standing to enforce city plans and city standards. And if they if they haven't gone to the city attorney yet to find that out, that we're, what have we been What I'm saying is that the city attorney may be compelled to respond once the lawsuit is filed, asking for a city attorney. Right, it's a city process. Why would, the, why would a city attorney have to wait until somebody gets sued before they and so what I'm So what I'm suggesting, to exactly that point, what I'm suggesting is asking for a city attorney opinion on the legality of the process as it's laid out. Because once he gets there, or she gets there, then it may have a radiating effect on other on other developers, because right now what happens is if you guys retreat, if you guys retreat, 
then it opens the door for this tactic to be used over and over again. Who has an ending to ask an Let me just let me just add to that. <clears throat> uh, number one, we did consult with the city attorney, and everything we're telling you, myself and Jeff, is accurate. Uh, we were advised by the city attorney's office that we cannot be a part of this. We cannot give legal advice. And so we are looking for many ways. We've been talking as much as we can about potential creative solutions. We have the NCO, uh, CCR in place so that we can uh, address this uh, in the future and, and see what we can do to, to help uh, eliminate some of these potential loopholes that, that you're seeing. So, uh, yes, sir. So a developer is basically breaking the rules and regulations set by the city, but the city doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Well, he's not against, he's against his right to, you can sue anybody. Well, I understand that, but what I'm saying is, I, I forget the lawsuit. This developer is breaking the law that the city has written on how that development should be done in the area. Now, to be clear, no, to be clear, to be clear, the city um, made a decision about the NCP standard. They felt that the canopy over a gas station is the same as a so, that, so he got, he got that. He got approval, but they didn't, the city doesn't see the way we see it. That's right. kind of what I'm saying. Well, to me, right. the way anybody sees well, it. Well, anybody sees it, right. Canopy is not a good, I get that. Right. But he was within his rights and within the law to continue. We, have, we were appealing that. Okay. And it was going to be then the work would have to stop. Right. And that's what was the catalyst. Was, I'm not stopping but it. it but what I'm saying, if, if that regulation was written where a building had, that's how it should be done, can't, no matter who, who pulled the strings and said, man, if you count the building, which we all know doesn't. But, the city but, but to be fair, to be fair, sir, we did ask for that CCR like a year. What's a CCR? A CCR is a city council resolution to, 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 uh, to make to look at that language in the NCD and make it consistent, so that we wouldn't have these kinds of misunderstandings. And it, it just is. And in the end, does it really matter how clear the language is if a developer can still, with his money and his power, um, intimidate somebody? I think that goes more to Diego's point: is this just opens the door once this gets out? You don't have a chilling effect. Yeah, and if anybody, if anybody wants a zoning change, and they're like, well, if you oppose this, we're going to see If you, and you know, we're under so much, there's so much going on in our neighborhood, which you'll hear from Zed in a few minutes. Like, we have to have that freedom. We can't, we can't, we can't not have that freedom. Did, yes, the, did the Neighborhood Association vote on dropping the appeal? No, but because we as individuals were, we had a deadline and there, it wasn't time to even meet at the Neighborhood Association. So because we were the ones who would be personally liable, we came together with Zud and the, the board and sat down and talked it through and we had gotten some attorney's opinions and we, we, we just were totally unprepared. I mean, the, the developer threatened to personally sue the board of Beacon Hill, not the, the board Beacon member. Hill board Association, members. the board members. So, so we, we had to draw some. I envision. All right. Mosey just caught us. I was just like shocked. Like really somebody would sue us for going through a process. But, you know, that's the way it is. Yes, sir. Councilman, when you, uh, when this came to the city council, did you vote in favor of the uh, developer? I'm sorry? When, when this came before the city council. It didn't go before the city council. There is no action. Yeah, there was no action. They, 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 they appealed in August of last year, and, and that began that process in August of last year. And if I could add, um, the councilman has consistently voted in favor of supporting neighborhoods when there have been votes. Uh, do you, you may be aware of the uh, uh, beauty salon case in Mankey Park that came before the city a week or two ago. Um, and Councilman Trevino, I think, was the lone vote. Warwick and Trevino, right, were, the, were only, the only two votes who supported uh, the neighborhood. Uh, several months before that, an attorney bought a single family residence in Monta Vista and on Mistletoe Street and wanted to turn it into her law office. Uh, she didn't go about trying to get the zoning changed before she bought it. She just bought it and then tried. 
and uh, Councilman Trevino supported the neighborhood in that situation. You know, the issue isn't about Councilman Trevino. Councilman Trevino is here today, and he knew there would be difficult questions and some hostile reactions, and I applaud you being here. He's always been here when, when we've had meetings to answer questions. The question is not, you know, has he been supported? The question is, you know, where do we go from here and, and what we can do from here to make sure this doesn't happen again because we just can't afford it to happen again, yes. Regardless of the lawsuit, can we still file a Board of Adjustment appeal or is no. that? No, the time, okay. the time limit is over. Okay. Now, and we gave away our leverage. The fact that oh, we won't sign off on not pursuing future appeals probably uh, gives us a future opportunity. My sense of things is that wouldn't have been brought up in, in, without them knowing that that was going to come in handy. And we, as of yet, as far as I know, have not seen a permit for signage. And our NCD signage uh, design st uh, standards are fairly restrictive, and it would be my guess that either there'll be a generous interpretation there as well, or even a request for a variance. And so we would have the opportunity then to go through this again. And I think the goal would be for us to be better prepared. And that's the whole point, because we do think there will be a future opportunity. So what can we do now to get better prepared for when that comes up? So I just want to address one thing. The, the, the second part of what has happened, uh, just know that, that uh, when, we, when we were tr uh, trying to get both parties together, um, we were asked to, to ask the developer to provide um, a letter saying that they would not pursue any further legal action. So we communicated that to the developer for the Neighborhood Association, and that's, that's, that's the response you got. Now, again, we want to look for ways to strengthen neighborhoods. We want to look for ways to, to help improve the character, improve the, the, the ability for neighborhoods to, to determine exactly what they want in their neighborhoods. We're looking at many things. One of the biggest ones we have is our bond. And so with the, with the bond, we want to look at how we improve the, the Fredericksburg Road corridor. And please know, I'm very, very supportive. It is on our list with TCI. We are pushing it. Uh, we're talking about the, the ability to make Fred Fredericksburg Road a, a truly amazing corridor for, for the neighborhoods, but for the city as a whole. The, the different neighborhoods that are attached that align that street are really, really important to the character and the diversity of our city, which is, I think, at the heart of why you're fighting this. And I, and I, I understand, and I understand the frustration. I wish I could do more. Uh, that's why I'm here tonight, because I want, I want you to know that I'm hearing you and I will continue to listen to you. We will look for ways to, to strengthen neighborhoods. We will look for ways to make our city better. Um, also, in addition to the meeting that the councilman referred to with the city attorney's office, I met with uh, the deputy city attorney again today and confirmed the fact that the city does not represent neighborhood associations, and this again may be frustrating, but you're se a separate legal entity. The city attorney's office represents the mayor, the city council, the city manager, and all the city departments. Uh, so it's very complicated. The other thing I did today was to go to the website to check on the Neighborhood Resource Center, which used to be uh, helpful in these decisions and they went out of existence last March. So uh, I think it's a very good idea to look for creative solutions, and we will certainly work with uh, Representative Bernal, the city attorney's office, and all the city departments to do what we can. Thank you. Matt, you, uh, you had your hand up. Did you well, want to make I one last comment? I think the point yeah. kind of made you know, by others, but it's, it's just that, you know, you. You, you say that you can't resolve, you can't help but resolve conflict, but you, you created conflict by not, you know, adhering to the standards, you know, the SCD standards that the city helped us to create. Well, I will, I will say this, and I am glad you're here, but, but we don't understand why you didn't file the CCR a year ago. If that had happened, we wouldn't even be having this issue. So I, I do want to answer that. Actually, that's not the case. The, the issue is once the ball got rolling, this, this case has left the train station. 
Now, we agree, this CCR, and we, we try to fight it all along, but the CCR we filed is only going to affect future projects. It will not affect this one. We can't retroactively affect The, the question projects. was, why was it not filed a year ago, in which case this would be the future, you know, the now would be the future. So, it was, it was not a year ago, it was last fall, and we did file it this spring. And so, again, only because what we're saying is we were looking for other avenues to make, to make this work. The CCR would not have corrected this particular situation. It will look for ways to protect you on other situations or future situations. communication going between uh, us and the developer for months and months and we never got any support and then we get threatened with a lawsuit and then you want to help us negotiate. Why did it take that long? Why did we have to be threatened before you were willing to do anything? Well, you know, again, I think that I'm sorry that, that, that that's the perception. That's not the case. Uh, the case is we've been talking to, to, to the uh, to their representative for, for, for a long time. This is not something that just occurred. This is not something that we just stepped into. It's, it's been an ongoing process. In fact, this, this whole case started in 2012. Uh, quite frankly, we have uh, Fred Chapla, who's been around for quite a while. Um, this is something that has been around and been developing for, for quite a long time. Uh, we are trying our best to, to facilitate better communication Certainly, we are dealing with, with, with folks that may or may not want to play nice. They don't want to negotiate. They don't want to talk. We can only try to encourage them to do so. And we're sorry. We're sorry that, that in this case, that didn't happen. We, we will always try to push for that level of communication. Much that we can't dwell on it, we, but we are sure not going to forget. So in the future, we'll be talking about ways to make that happen. Um, so for even more fun this evening, let's talk about some zoning issues. Um, before, Mark Spielman is the chair of ZUD. Like our house now, we don't talk about anything but the neighborhood. I think we get divorced when we're not doing this anymore. Um, but I want to make a case quickly before Mark, as Mark's making his way up here, this is a strategic time in our neighborhood. We need ZUD members. We need people to take on one or two cases and you just follow up on it. Something you can do with a computer, a couple of phone calls, and that's it. We're desperate right now. This is a time when people, developers are moving in, people are flipping houses or the building structures, and they're not NCD compliant, they're not code compliant, they're not anything compliant. And it's really important that if you can, volunteer, you show up to a meeting once a month, we have a code compliance officer there, and sometimes the head of zoning comes to that meeting, but you would only take maybe two cases, and it's just a matter of following up on that case, and, and believe me, everyone's very happy to work with you in the city. 